Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle here, talking about metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks are one of the three types of rocks on Earth's surface identified by how they form. And metamorphic rocks form by being another type of rock, either igneous sedimentary or metamorphic, which in this case we'll call a protolith, and then changing their form underneath various metamorphic processes to create a new type of rock. So we will go through the various metamorphic processes, agents of metamorphism. So the agents of metamorphism are going to be, most importantly, heat and pressure. Heat can do a lot. Pressure can also do a lot. We've got compression and shear. So this is not only pressure being applied, but how is that pressure being applied? That is not a very good H. And then hydrothermal, which is going to be hot water. Heat. The center of the Earth is very hot. Very hot. In fact, the geothermal gradient states that the deeper you go in Earth's surface, the hotter that it gets. Not only that, the deeper that you go in Earth's surface, the higher the pressure is because you feel all the overlying weight of the rock. So pressures and temperatures at the center of the Earth are very high. So high that, in fact, no person could ever go there. Unfortunately, there is no journey to the center of the earth. So when heat is applied through burial or of the various uh, types of metamorphism, see my lecture on types of metamorphism, when heat is applied around 200 degrees Celsius, recrystallization occurs. And a couple things are happening here. We have new minerals that are forming and alteration of the existing minerals. I often like to use a pot of soup as an example. It's like saying, if I had a pot of broccoli cheddar soup, and it was all broccoli and it was all cheddar, and then we buried that pot and all of a sudden, the broccolis decided they didn't want to be broccolis anymore. Now they are potatoes, and the cheddar doesn't want to be cheddar anymore. The cheddar now wants to be leeks, and we have a potato leek soup. So what, and this happens in a solid state. This is the important part. It doesn't completely melt. Maybe the soup is uh, liquid, and this doesn't really help our case, but solid state metamorphism where underneath the agents of metamorphism you have a rock, a protolith, change form, and what changes is the mineralogy and in this analogy the minerals are the ingredients in the soup, also the texture. So there's a nice little review on metamorphism and how we get metamorphic rocks created. Metamorphic rocks are created at about 200 to around 800 degrees. After that, they melt and they become molten material. Pressure. Pressure is a force over an area. And the deeper you go underneath the surface of the earth, the more overlying material. I like to think of it like mm, when you were a kid and you, you and your friends all jumped on somebody and you made a dog pile. That's so fun. <coughs> well, <coughs> I got really excited. Well, imagine you're in a 20 person dog pile. Do you want to be the person on the bottom or the top? Think about it. I think you want to be the person on the top because you know the person on the bottom is going to get smashed by the weight of all the people on top. So you take rocks 
and you think of it like a dog pile, and the deeper you are in Earth's surface, the more rocks you have above you, the higher the pressure is. Higher pressures can lead to changing the chemistry and the texture of the rock. We've got confining pressure and directed pressure. This will lead to foliated versus non-foliated. And when we're thinking in terms of plate tectonics, there's different forces at play. So we've got differential stress where a material is squeezed differently from all sides. So pressure, force per unit area is good, but then what if we have a plate tectonic boundary that's giving compressive forces or that's pulling and stretching, giving tension forces, or you've got one part going in one direction and another part going in the other, maybe like a fault, giving shear forces. So these various confining pressures and differential stress will create different types of metamorphic rock. In fact, confining pressure is when you have pressure from all sides. Compression and shear is going to be a subset of pressure where you have the pressure being different from different sides that are uh, being imposed on the rock. <clears throat> I mentioned this before. It's important. So the rock doesn't crack, the rock doesn't break, the rock doesn't melt. In fact, there's a migration of the crystal grains. Because it's hot, it stays solid, but it can change its form. It's pretty wild, I know, but this is how metamorphic rocks are uh, created. Temperature and pressure cause a body of rock to change shape without breaking and without melting, giving it preferred orientations where we can have grains that are equal the same size or grains that are different sizes known as inequant. So last but not least, our final agent of metamorphism is going to be hot water. Hot water can act on the rock in which it is flowing through and it can alter that rock. We call it uh, metasomatism. We often see this in quartz veins where there would be cracks in the rock that hot water was moving through. That hot fluid ended up changing the type of the rock that was in there, accelerating the metamorphic process. So this is usually in underwater areas associated with mid-ocean ridges, but anywhere that you have hot water acting on rocks, the fluids can be an agent of metamorphism. What we get here is the rock serpentine, named because it has a very scaly serpent-like look to it. And the rock here is produced at what are called hydrothermal vents or black smokers, which are really awesome, by the way. They host these amazing communities of organisms that don't use sunlight to reproduce because <clears throat> they're very, very deep underneath the ocean. No photosynthesis, they use chemosynthesis. And they produce giant crabs, giant tube worms, really amazing things. Anyways, slightly off topic, but, you know, really cool. So, metamorphic rocks are rocks that have changed their form from igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. They do this through the process of metamorphism in a variety of environments, but the agents of metamorphism that cause a rock to change its form, its texture, and its mineralogy are going to be, most importantly, heat and pressure. We also have fluids in there, and the way that the pressure is inflicted or undergone for the rock can also cause changes specific to that rock, compression and shear. And this happens within Earth's surface or underneath the surface of the Earth within Earth's interior. So agents of metamorphism, what's real important here? Heat and pressure. What changes rock from one type to another? Heat and pressure. Thank you so much. I'll see you again.